Well, this is a bit of a surprise. It wasn't actually that well planned. This is a bit of a spontaneous video. Well, as spontaneous as a scripted video can be. I was just sitting here and I realized I had a few hours before the New Year's party begins. So I was like, why don't I do something quick and get it written up and record? I know you haven't seen me for a while. And there's been a lot of people that have expressed, you know, that they miss seeing me on camera. So I thought, it's New Year, why the hell not? So if you hear banging, it could either be downstairs with the preparations, or it can be outside with the fireworks, as I am recording this on New Year's Eve. So we'll see how it goes. So back when I started the channel Essence of Thought in 2011, things seemed a lot simpler. People in the vaguely defined atheist community just sort of did their own thing. Sometimes interests would cross over, sometimes they wouldn't. But hey, that's fine, that was cool. You could go and do your thing, I could go and do my thing, and so long as there was a level of mutual respect, we could still work towards the common goal of secularism. Unbeknownst to me, there was a storm brewing. I was just getting into the atheist community on YouTube at the time. I previously abandoned a different community and was looking for something to fill my spare time. I also had some trouble talking about certain topics in real life, so this amazing online platform gave me something I really desired. A community to talk things out with, to discuss, to debate and test my ideas. I didn't know many of the names yet. I didn't even know that there were secular conventions before joining the YouTube community, so I had no idea about the incident in which a man approached a well-known speaker, Rebecca Watson, inside a confined space and asked her to come back to his place for coffee. Just after Watson had given a speech on sexism in the community. I didn't know that Watson had then created an incredibly tame video offering some simple advice to male attendees at such conventions on how they can be more aware of how they approach such situations to avoid making women uncomfortable. All of you, except for the, the one man who um, didn't really grasp, I think, what I was saying on the panel, because um, at the bar later that night, actually at four in the morning, um, we were at the hotel bar, 4 a.m. I said, you know, I've had enough guys, I'm exhausted, going to bed. Uh, so I walked to the elevator and a man got on the elevator with me and said, don't take this the wrong way, but I find you very interesting and I would like to talk more. Would you like to come to my hotel room for coffee? Um, just a word to the wise here, guys, uh, don't do that. Um, you know, <laughs> uh, I don't really know how else to explain how this makes me incredibly uncomfortable, but I'll just sort of lay it out that I it was a single woman you know, in a foreign country at 4 a.m. in a hotel elevator with you, just you, and I don't invite me back to your hotel room right after I finished talking about how it creeps me out and makes me uncomfortable when men sexualize me in that manner. So, yeah. Um, but everybody else seemed to really get it, and, and thank you for, for getting it. I didn't know that famous atheists such as Richard Dawkins had written public letters in response, mocking Watson's very sincere and, again, incredibly tame message to men, role-playing as a response to a fake Muslim woman in which he brought up all manner of whataboutism, in a fashion that would make a faux news presenter proud. Though I note that Dawkins later apologised for said letter. I wasn't aware of any of this, and then overnight, I was. I remember seeing sides being drawn up, different blogs and websites, YouTubers and activists being dragged in. And throughout all of this, a saying was born. Politics doesn't belong in the atheist community. Every time I'd bring up an issue of gender, politics doesn't belong in the atheist community. Every time I'd mention racism, politics doesn't belong in the atheist community. Every time I 
brought up trans rights as a trans person, part of the atheist community, politics doesn't belong in the atheist community. And that last one really used to irk me. Not simply because it wasn't true, as I'm about to go on to explain, but for the fact that years before I'd come out as bisexual and discuss that, I still do, and to this day, I never get the same response towards me defending my sexuality as I do my gender. So it seemed that what was being deemed as politics was anything a person felt didn't belong, rather than something with certain attributes that can be described, identified, and thus excluded. It was circular reasoning. This doesn't belong in the community. Why? Well, because it's political. How do we know it's political? Well, because it doesn't belong in the community. For me, it was just another day in the office. Except we'd now substitute a conversation about how we know the Bible is true, because it says so, for what does and doesn't belong in the secular community. Of course, we know the truth. There are large numbers of LGB people in the secular community, and large segments of the secular community have been relatively forward-thinking on the subject for a while. So, that was deemed as fine. That could be included. That could be discussed. That belonged. But the rest of the stuff? Sorry, but no. That stuff went too far. Why? No reason. Never any valid reason, at least. But there's a greater flaw here, and that's the fact that there really isn't an atheist community, per se. There's a group of atheists, many of whom have formed a secular community. Now, I'm happy to use either atheist or secular community as synonyms, but it is the latter, not the former, which is most accurate. We don't simply gather in non-worship of the non-God. We gather to build community so that we can support one another via secular means, ones which religious institutions have prevented us from doing for millennia. We pass on information to better inform and educate one another on the struggles we have and very likely will face. We mobilise into a political force, one which can push forward as a unified front to remove religion from state. Do you know how surreal it is to have people who are part of a community centred on state-church separation turn to you and tell you that politics doesn't belong in the very same community? Because I most certainly do. It's not simply a surreal experience, but an infuriating one. It's infuriating to me because it demonstrates a care only for oneself. They're happy fighting for equality when it's religious equality, because that's what secularism is. For there to be true equality of religion, a person must first of all be free to make their own choice of religion or none. But the moment it comes to fighting for other forms of equality, they suddenly they start sucking their teeth because that goes too far. So as a reminder, seeing as we're just starting a new year, my dear fellow atheists, secularism is inherently political. You'll just have to learn to live with that fact. Hi there. I'd just like to say a few things here at the end of the video before you go. First, I'd like to thank everyone who's ever donated to the channel via Patreon, giving a special thanks to the following people. Hannah Banghart, Matthew Kovac, John Schoenrock, Alexander Williams, Ernst Puna, and Daniel Martinez. Your support has ensured this channel its ability to grow over the years, and really is the only thing that manages to keep the channel afloat. I'd also like to ask that you comment down below and like this video, as well as subscribe and follow Essence of Thought on Facebook and Twitter. Please also consider following Atheist Alliance International on Facebook, an organisation dedicated to helping atheists around the globe. Any comments utilising language which insults others on the basis of perceived gender, sexuality, ethnicity or ability both mental and physical will be removed immediately and the commenter may be blocked on the moderator's discretion. 
Let's keep this space one which upholds the humanist values. Thank you.